Hey, what is going on, everybody? My name is 50-year-old Fanny Bieber. I hope you guys are doing well. I am all decked out in my Packer gear. Uh, excited, but also realistic. Uh, hopeful that the Packers beat the Bears today. They should beat the Bears today, but if they don't, it's okay because Jordan Love and the Packers have already exceeded my expectations for the year. So no matter what, it would be nice to continue watching uh, playoff football again because we didn't get it last year. But if they don't win, that, that's okay. I I'm going to be okay. Unlike the Bucks, who are breaking my heart pretty much every single game, they are not playing well. Uh, they got to figure it out. But we're not we're not going to talk about sports. Obviously, I'm very, very into sports and very upset right now with how my teams are playing, but that's okay. We'll save that for another video on a different channel. Uh, late night rants with Fanny uh, coming soon. That's not really a thing. That's not really coming soon. I've got some really interesting data today. Uh, at least I find it really interesting. I hope you guys do. If you do, make sure to hit that subscribe button down below. Leave a like, leave a comment. You know, you know the drill, uh, but I want to know. I like feedback. I like knowing what you think. And speaking of feedback, I do have a couple of questions for you. So uh, I, if you've been following the channel for a while. One thing that I really enjoy doing is giving uh, cards away. I like giving things away. I just like making other people happy. It's just, uh, I don't know. It's just a, a, something that I really enjoy doing. I've had a lot of Pokemon cards. I've sold a lot of Pokemon cards throughout the years. I've sold off my collection multiple times. Uh, Pokemon is just such a great, great thing uh, for me personally. I love love, love everything about the escape, everything that Pokemon stands for. And I like to share that that passion with as many people as I possibly can. And that's why we give a lot of stuff away. We give away booster boxes, we give away ETBs, we give away uh, single, we give away a lot of stuff. Uh, but the, the problem with doing it is that it's always something in specific, which might not tailor to your collection goals. So I was wondering if maybe this year, as we enter into 2024, uh, maybe this year uh, I do the giveaway and I do like, okay, well, what if we give away a, a thousand dollars uh, on a monthly basis. Let's give away a thousand dollars in in cash or otherwise uh, pick a winner and that winner gets to spend up to a thousand dollars on what their collection goal might be because I want it to be something that uh, is specifically tailored to the winner where it's not just like oh you can win an evolving skies box or you can win a Paldean Fates ETBs. Like those are fun and that's great uh, but that might not be something that somebody is chasing. That might not be something that somebody is necessarily interested in winning or that they really want to win that's really going to make this big difference in their life. Uh, I'm a huge fan of helping people achieve their collection goals. Uh, so doing something like that, you can let me know. I do actually, please let me know in the comment section down below what you think about something like that as we move forward throughout this year. I just want to help people reach reach their goals that might not be able to do it right now uh, otherwise, and this hopefully will help. Also, uh, I've been getting a lot of questions about pack breaks. I've had a lot of stuff going on um, lately. So pack breaks will resume. I do think I'm going to tailor things a little bit differently. I do want to start doing member breaks because I haven't really done anything for the channel members. So thank you to all the channel members. So I think uh, starting with Paldean Fates, once Paldean Fates releases or we get our stock into ship out pre-orders, I think we're going to do a, a, a giveaway break or a free break for, for members where everybody who's uh, a member, kind of like what I think Pat Flynn, Deep Pocket Monster does a, a lot with his channel. We're going to put everybody's name on a wheel who is a member and we're going to spin that wheel and we'll give away, you know, X amount of Paldean Fates ETBs that we will open up. So maybe we'll give away 20 or, or 30 uh, Paldean Fates ETBs and that'll be the stream for that week. I kind of want to do things a little bit differently. Uh, the, the live breaks are a lot of fun and we'll continue to do things like that. Uh, but I wanted to do stuff that tailors to members because of all the support that you guys have been giving me. So uh, thank you so much for all of that. Uh, we're going to jump into the data. Uh, we're going to talk about evolutions today. And I know that's a huge throwback, uh, but this data just kind of blew my mind. Obviously, evolutions Evolutions is a huge set for a lot of people. Uh, but did you know when Evolutions first came out, it was not enjoyed by pretty much anybody. There was a small amount of excitement when it first released because people did have that nostalgia, that throwback. Pokemon Go had recently released. There was a lot of people who were getting back into the game because of Pokemon Go. Uh, Evolutions, albeit, did not have a whole lot of good competitive cards. Uh, there was a Rattata, just a, a, a common Rattata that, that did play in competitive play a little bit uh, because it was a, a a good way to shut down, I think it was tools, was, was the issue uh, because a, a Garbodor card or it was ability, whatever it was, I think it was tools uh, because Garbodor was running rampant all over the format. But there wasn't a whole lot of great competitive cards in the format. Maybe Starmie breaked it, okay. But other than that, there was really nothing uh, with Evolutions. Uh, and Evolutions was overprinted so much because so many people uh, were coming back into the hobby that all of a sudden then for a couple of years, it was basically thrown in every single collection box, every tin, all over the place. 
you could buy evolutions packs for basically under two dollars a piece you could buy evolutions boxes uh, after release like six months a year after release for still 75 70 dollars like they were super super cheap and then during the pandemic evolutions blew up in price and i don't think anybody really understood the magnitude that the nostalgia factor played on things uh the nostalgia factor played a huge huge magnitude on Evolution's booster boxes because this was a way to get a cheaper uh, cheaper base set booster box, right? Obviously, you had uh, a lot of similarities where you were pulling similar artworks and things like that to all the uh, all the old cards from the original base set. And at the time uh, when Evolution's uh, kind of reached its height or kind of blew up in price, base set booster boxes were around $25,000. Now, they've lost a lot of that value. You can find base set booster boxes for fourteen, fifteen thousand dollars $15,000. You can look pretty easily and find them for that 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 price point. So they've lost a decent amount of value from the, the height of the pandemic. Uh, but Evolution's still very expensive, still r right around $800, $750, $800 a booster box, which is insane because the values in that box are just not there. We talk about fun cost in this channel, and this, that's what we're going to talk about right here. The fun cost is what it, what it costs you to open up a booster box. You should never expect to make money opening a booster box. So I want to make that very, very clear. You should never expect to make money opening up a booster box. Opening up a booster box, opening Opening up Pokemon cards is supposed to be fun. Uh, you get that trip down memory memory lane, uh, especially for a, a set like Evolutions. But uh, let's look at how much that trip down memory lane is actually going to cost you. So this looks a lot different than what we're used to because there are so many more ultra rares nowadays than there were back then. So if you look at XY Evolutions, this is it. This is all the ultra rares that are in the set. And I included the break cards. I did not include uh, the, the secret rares that are in the set because those are very, very common. You get a few of them per box, that flying Pikachu, uh, the, the surfing Pikachu, and so on and so forth. I did not include those as uh, big, big pulls. I also did not include any of the holographic rares. Most of them are anywhere from a dollar to four dollars outside of the, the Charizard. The Charizard I did include in here uh, for this first example, we'll, we'll look at a second example. So stay tuned to the end because the data is going to blow your mind. I, I think it is. At least it, it blew my mind. So uh, we're going to go through average pricing, associate that with pull rates of a booster box. So you can see how much it would cost you to open up a booster box of evolutions. And maybe, <laughs> maybe you'll be like, okay, I should just buy singles for evolutions because you shouldn't, shouldn't break it. It's not worth like the nostalgia is a lot of fun. I get it. It is a lot of fun to go down memory lane. Uh, but these, these numbers are, are crazy when you think about them. Uh, so we're going to start out just looking at the regular art EXs, and there's only like seven of them in this set, whereas nowadays you get like 15, 16 regular art EXs in a set. But Venusaur EX, uh, basically bulk pricing. There's a, over half of them are just selling for bulk pricing. That Venusaur EX from Evolutions, only selling for $2. That Charizard EX, this is just the regular art, currently selling for $7. The Blastoise EX, the second most expensive regular art in the set, uh, selling for $4. The Slowbro EX, selling for $2. The Mewtwo EX is only at $3. The Pidgeot EX is only at $2. And the Dragonite EX also only at $2. So very cheap for all the regular art EXs. Same thing with the break cards. So you've got Nine Tails Break. That one's only selling for $2. Starmie and Needle King are both only selling for $1 a piece. And then you've got the Machamp Break, which is currently selling for $3. That's the most expensive out of the break cards. If you look at the full arts, and I did separate full arts from full art megas when I originally made this pull rate data. So uh, I do I don't I don't know if the full art megas really had the same pull rates or not, but I did separate them for the purpose uh, of when I did these pull rates originally. Uh, Mewtwo EX currently selling for $12. Pidgeot EX currently selling for $3. Uh, Dragonite EX full art is at $11. The Brock's Grit full art, that's a full art supporter that's old, like seven years old now, uh, only selling for $4. And then Misty's Determination, uh, only $12 on that one. The regular art Megas. Uh, so Megas was a really, really fun idea that Pokemon implemented. I really enjoyed the Mega Era. I thought it was fantastic. Uh, but these cards are relatively inexpensive. Mega Venus Venusaur, only $6. The Mega Charizard, the most expensive of the regular Megas, obviously. That one's selling for $22. The Mega Blastoise is selling for $9. And the Slowbro and Pidgeot currently selling for $2. Obviously, those are impacted a lot by those Kanto Power Boxes. There's a lot more supply out there, at least so it seems. Uh, that brought down pricing quite a bit for those. I don't know if they'd be a whole lot higher anyways, uh, but only $2 a piece for those. The Full Art Megas, you've got the Mega Venusaur EX selling for $11. The Mega Charizard, the most expensive card in the set as far as Ultra Rares go. 
That one is selling for $47. And the Mega Blastoise EX Full Art is at $15. The Mega Pidgeot EX is at $5. So if we look at the Charizards. Now, uh, the great thing about the original base set box is you would pull pretty much a Charizard every single box that you open. It wasn't a guarantee, uh, but since you got 12 hollows per, per box, uh, you would statistically, you had a really good chance of pulling a Charizard. Not the case in this one, uh, but we're going to assume that you do pull one in just a second here. The regular Charizard holographic rare is $51. That that's what that's selling for. And the regular or the reverse hollow Charizard is selling for $43. All right. So let's break this down for a second. Your average hits per booster box is nine. That includes the break. You get 8.99 hits per booster box. So that includes you're getting uh, about 2.12 breaks per booster box. Uh, so that, that brings the pull rates up a little bit. No different than uh, when we talk about the trainer gallery and the radiant cards and things like that. So the pull rates are actually closer to uh, six, but you get 2.12 breaks, which brings it up to nine, which is a little bit better. When you look at the average, average regular arts per booster box, you're going to get 3.32 hits per booster box. The average price point of those regular arts, remember you could pull a Charizard that's worth $7 or you could just pull a Pidgeot that's only worth $2. But the average price point, if we average all those together, assume uh, similar pull rates, you're getting $3.14 per EX, per regular art EX. Uh, if we multiply that times the amount of regular arts you're expected to get, on average, your booster box is going to have $10.42, $10.42 of regular arts. This is a small number uh, of regular art pulls in value. The full arts in the booster box, you get 0.79. Remember, this is, does not include megas. This is your full art supporters, your full art Pokemon. You're gonna get 0.79 per booster box uh, at an average price point of $8.40. Obviously the Dragonite, the Mewtwo, and the Misty's determination a little bit more uh but the the brock's great only four dollars right so average eight dollars and forty cents that means on average you're gonna have six dollars and sixty four cents worth of value in your evolutions booster box if we look at the regular megas per box you're getting 1.68 at an average value of eight dollars and twenty cents now this is skewed by that mega charizard selling for twenty two dollars obviously that's going to play a big impact on here but your per box average is about thirteen dollars and seventy eight cents because you're getting 1.68 per booster box your average full art megas not a whole lot in the set you're only getting 1.08 so rarely will you get two uh, but you should get at least one your average value on that is $19.50 again very skewed by that full art mega charizard uh, being a $47 card that brings that average value up a little bit if you don't pull that full art charizard in your value uh, your average goes way down so $21.06 is the average per booster box it's gonna it's not gonna make a difference either way it's gonna be bad no matter what average break per box 2.12 breaks per box at an average value of $1.75. That means on average, your booster box will have $3.71 worth of value per, uh, per booster box for breaks. Uh, if we assume, and this is not how it goes, if we assume you're gonna get a holographic Charizard in your booster box, uh, that adds $51. And if we assume you also get a rate or, or a reverse hollow Charizard in your booster box that adds $43. Uh, you're probably not going to get both. Chances are you, you you might get one, but probably not both. Um, this is what you're looking at. So your <laughs> this is so bad. Your average value per booster box, if we add in all of these ultra rares, all these ultra rares average here, uh, is $149.61. That's how much your average pulls are going to be on that booster box. If we look at ancillary hits, now you get bulk, you get codes, that's not really worth a whole lot, but you do get the holographic cards, and like I said, most of those are going to be worth $1 to $4. That lily pad Mew is worth about $4. You do have the secret rares in here in the, in the set that are worth a couple dollars a piece. So let's say on average, uh, your ancillary hits that are not ultra rares, uh, let's say they're $30 a piece. Your booster box right now is selling for $788.89 cents. This is what it's done over the past year on TCG Player. So you can see this graph trending upward pretty much all year. And this is why booster boxes are always a very, very safe way to put your money in. If you leave them sealed, if you break that bad boy open, you're going to be in trouble. Uh, January 23 uh, just skyrocketed pretty much throughout the entire year, jumped all the way up to about $800. It's backed off a little bit, but still sitting at $788.89. So just strong growth all year round. Uh, your fun cost of opening up this booster box is about $609.20. $609.28 it's going to cost you. That's what you should expect to lose opening up an XY Evolutions booster box. So then you have to ask yourself, is it worth it? Is that fun cost worth it? But it gets worse. So let's say, for example, that, hey, Fanny, we want to grade all of these cards and we're going to get tens on all of them. You probably won't because Evolutions was a terrible set for printing. Uh, the, the quality was bad. 
pretty much throughout every single print run of Evolutions had. It's very hard to get 10s on a lot of these cards, and we'll look at that in a second here. But let's say, for a, let's say, for example, that you open all these up and you grade them, okay? Here's your PSA 10 price, your last sold, or your an average of the last few sold of every single PSA 10 of all these cards. Uh, so you've got v Venusaur EX, the regular art, last sold, $26. Charizard EX, the regular art, PSA 10 going for $66. The Blastoise EX, regular art, selling for $37. In PSA 10, that Slowbro is selling for $20. The Mewtwo EX is at $30. The Pidgeot EX is at $20. And the Dragonite EX is at $35. The Break cards, you're looking at $24 in PSA 10 for that Ninetales, $20 in PSA 10 for that Starmie. That Nidoking is $30 in PSA 10. And the Machamp is also $30 in PSA 10. Full Art's a little bit more expensive. The Mewtwo EX selling for $62 in PSA 10. The Pidgeot EX selling for $35 in PSA 10. The Dragonite EX is at $77 in PSA 10. The Brock's Grid is at $33. And the Misty's Determination, the most expensive of the bunch, along with Dragonite, selling for $77. If we look at the regular art Megas, you're looking at Mega Venusaur EX at $46. The Mega Charizard EX, the regular art, selling for $85. The Mega Blastoise in PSA 10 is selling for 46 and the slow bro and pidgeot selling for 30 each the full art megas mega venusaur is selling for 59 the full art mega charizard this is your most expensive card of the set outside of the hollow hollow rare charizard uh 132 dollars the mega blastoise 65 and the mega pidgeot $40. Now, here's the big one right here. Uh, the regular Charizard. If you pull a regular Charizard, I mean, you probably won't, but if you do, uh, it is possible uh, it's got a grade of 10. And we'll talk about the chances of it grading a 10. Uh, $1,450 is the basically what it's going for right now. The last sold ones. Probably get a little bit more for it. Might get a little bit less if it's an eBay auction. Uh, but $1,450 is kind of the last sold average. Uh, and then you've got the reverse hollow Charizard. $351 in a PSA 10. Here is the Charizard pop population numbers. This is just the holographic. Uh, you can see a total of 35,000 339 Charizards that have been graded. 35,000. This is just holographic rare. Uh, only 505 have gotten a 10. Only 505. The percentage of that means 1.43%. Uh, so every single Charizard, and I'm sure there's been some that have been cracked open and resubmitted, but uh, for the sake of numbers, 1.43% of the Charizards that have been submitted have hit a 10. Uh, pretty much the rest of them are 7, 8, 9. 19,595 9s, 12,101 8s, and 1,905 7s. I'm not going to go down the entire list, but 35,539 that have been graded. Like I said, it was very, very tough set. So that, that's why that Charizard holographic rare is worth so much in PSA 10. But again, goes to show you why if you're cracking a box of evolutions just to try and grade cards, uh, don't, like, be careful. Like, don't overspend. Don't, like, you got to be careful out there. Uh, again, average hits per box. We're not going to go through all of this uh, as in depth. But uh, if we average your PSA 10 price, and let's just say every single card sold at PSA 10 pricing, uh, regular arts, your average is $33.43 at an average of 3.32 per booster box. That means your box is going to hold about $111 worth of value in your PSA 10 regular arts. Your full arts, 0.79 per box, at an average value of $56.80 means your average box is going to have $44.87 worth of full art value in PSA 10. Regular megas, 1.68 per box at $47.40, the average PSA 10 price. That means your box is going to have an average of $79.60. 63 cents worth of value in those PSA 10 cards. Your average full art megas per box, you're looking at an average price point of $74. Remember, that is going to be impacted heavily by that Charizard, but if you get PSA 10s on your full art megas, average value is $74. That means on average, your booster box will have $79.92 worth of value. Your average break per box, $19.50 in PSA 10. So if you grade all these cards and you get PSA 10s on everything, uh, your per box average is $41.34 for breaks. And we're leaving out the Charizards on this one just to kind of prove a point. Your average value per booster box, assuming you graded all your hits and got PSA 10s in all of them, is $356.75. Your ancillary hits still $30. Uh, that means in total you're looking at $386.75 in value out of your evolutions box. This isn't including the grading costs or anything like that. Your fun cost is still 
$402.14. It's absolutely insane. Still $400 it's going to cost you to open up the box. That's your fun cost if you grade all your hits in PSA 10. That number was a little bit mind-blowing to me. I did expect this number to be very, very low, $609.28. I expected it, the fun cost, sorry, to be extremely high. Uh, I was not expecting the fun cost for PSA 10s to be this insane. So Evolutions, a lot of fun to open uh, because it does bring you that trip down memory lane. It gives you a cheaper option to open up cards that are the same as the base set that we might uh, have opened and you share that experience with your kid. It can be a lot of fun and I get that. Uh, but also the fun cost that's associated with it is absolutely insane. So the, obviously the key is don't go out and buy booster boxes of Evolutions to kind of tear open or rip. Uh, maybe focus more on single packs if you can find some for decently cheap. Or if you can find an old tin or something like that that might have that nostalgia factor in it. But I thought this, this information was very, very interesting. I hope you did too. If you did, please hit that subscribe button down below. Leave a like, leave a comment, leave an F in chat if the Packers lose today. But thank you guys so much for taking the time to watch the video. Uh, you guys mean the world to me. Thank you so much. I love you guys. I'll talk to you again in a couple days. Until next time, peace!